Well, 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 it's been another year and I'm back again. And this is a deck study I've been waiting and wanting to do for a long time. So I thought it'd uh, be best that we refresh and revamp and restart the deck study program on my YouTube channel with the uh, Federal 52 deck study. This is a deck released by King's Wild Project. This, the one I'm going to show you is going to be the Series 2, and um, this is going to be a, a long video, so I'm just going to warn you in advance. Um, I have a lot to show you um, and a lots of things to go over um, in accordance with this and you know some other news and notes um, that I want to get to. So I want to start at the very beginning. Um, the Federal 52s... Um, Series 1 were released a long time ago. Um, I think 2013, 2012, 2013, somewhere in that range. And it was Jackson Robinson's kind of first dive into playing cards um, as far as designing goes. And now he's a full-time deck designer, deck creator, um, and the creative genius behind the King's Wild Project. Um, and this was his first kind of dive into that. So along with Along with the Federal 52s, he also did the Silver Certificates and the Gold Certificates. Um, they, several versions of each deck have been made since. Um, there's branded versions and unbranded versions. I'm going to show you um, examples of both. Um, so in, in accordance with this, like I said, this is, a, this is the Series 2. So this one just came out um, and got re-released here recently in the last year or so. Um, and I've, I've had this for over a year, I think, or if not close to it. Um, and along with, with that, way back, way back when, a long time ago, I was able to get the silver certificate and the gold certificate. So let me show you those um, as well. So this is a silver certificate deck. And this is the gold certificate deck branded. So as you can see, it's bicycle branded. This is a silver certificate unbranded. Obviously, the Federal 52s are going to be unbranded now because uh, they're not, um, or he's not doing with bicycle decks. As far as the branding goes, he's doing his own brand. So that's kind of the versions of all three. Like I said, there's, I think, I want to say 12 versions almost um, total of, of the set. And the uh, Black Reserve notes are coming out. Actually, they're, although they're already out, but I'm getting mine soon, and I should have probably another video on that. Might not be a full deck study. I might just do a, a Instagram live, you know, kind of reveal on it, as I think I'm going to do with the silver certificate deck. I'm not going to do a full deck study on this one, um, because the decks are. I mean, they're, they're different. There's there's way different artwork in them, but the the you know the genre is pretty much the same, and there's not going to be a whole lot of new information as far as just showing you the artwork inside the deck, and I think I can do that well, more quickly in a different version. So, um, kind of how I want to start is um, kind of going over some background of what these decks are, what the artwork is inspired from, and all that. Um, like I said, it's going to be a long video, so, you know, sit back, relax, throw another log on the fire, and let's get into it, as they say. So, what is a Federal Reserve note? Um, well, basically, well, let's start with what the Federal Reserve is in addition. So, um, Federal Reserve notes are bank notes, and they're used um, by the United States um, and denominated in dollars. Um, the notes are printed um, by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing um, by Crane and Company. Um, so basically what a Federal Reserve note is, is a United States dollar bill, $5 bill, $10 bill, $20, $100, whatever increment um, you, whatever increment there, there is. Now the, the, re, the Federal Reserve notes are legal tender and it's backed by the Federal Reserve banks. Um, and I have a lot of notes here, so bear with me. Um, so that what the Federal Reserve um, is the central banking system in the United States. Now that was created 
uh, on December 13th, 1913. Um, and what it entails is about 12 regional banks um, that make up the banking system and they are to regulate the private banks. So um, the Federal Reserve um, is uh, formed for the National Treasury, um, which started in 1789 to manage the, the government revenue. And its founding secretary was Alexander Hamilton. Um, and let's see. And it's, and it's basically in charge, the Treasury is in charge of printing paper currency and minting coins. And like I said, in charge of the revenue of the country. So way back in the day, they didn't have the Federal Reserve banking system. They used what was called the gold standard um, and other means. And the paper money that was printed was more or less a receipt um, for the bearer of either gold or silver. Um, and it wasn't until, like I said, um, in 1913 when the actual Federal Reserve kind of took over the national banking system in the country. So um, so there's basically the, the, re, the, the reserve note is the dollar bills that you see now. And the gold certificates and silver certificates were issued um, back in, you know, the 1800s and early 1900s, so like I said, as, as a bearer receipt. Um, so... Um, the silver certificate um, is pretty much a, a legal tender and was a bearer receipt for silver coins. The gold certificate was a bearer's receipt for gold coins uh, deposited with the U.S. Treasury. So that's kind of, and, and, and there's increments, all kind of increments of dollars. And so these these playing cards kind of make or, or an homage to the old bank notes, um, the Federal Reserve notes, the gold certificate notes, and the silver certificate notes. And they're all different. Um, for instance, uh, when we open and look at the cards, uh, well, the Federal 52s are, are pretty much standard green sealed. So there's different colors of seals you'll find on different bank notes. Um, the green seals uh, are pretty much um, the issuing bank of the Federal Reserve note. So you're going to see the green seals on all the most recent bills that are Federal Reserve notes. Um, the red seal um, was issued on currency and backed by the backed by gold and silver. So the red seals are older um, and those were in accordance with the with the gold standard. Um, the blue seal, if you see a, a blue silver on a, on a note, that's a silver certificate. And the yellow seal you'll see on the gold certificate. And as, as we look in um, this, unfortunately, I'm not going to open um, because this is the only one I have. Um, so I can show you this real quick. Um, but you can see the artwork on each deck um, coordinates with, with the colors. So you see a lot of golds and yellows in this deck. The silver certificate, there's a lot of blues and colder colors like that. And this one, there's obviously green tints to it and whatnot. Um, and there's also a brown seal, which, which isn't in these, but um, that was also a receipt for gold. Um, and that was issued only between 1929 and 1935. So there's some, some background on that. Um, so let's move. Oh, I think we did. So let's talk about more in depth with the silver, silver certificate. Um, again, um, those were bare notes and they were in issued between 1878 and 1964. Now, right now, they're still in circulation. They still count as legal tender, but they're only worth whatever the face value is. So if it's if it's a $2 silver certificate, it's only worth $2, and it's not worth $2 in silver, which would be worth more, because silver is worth more than the dollar currently. Um, is, and the same with the gold. So um, that is all about that. So that's kind of all the background information you need on what these cards and what you're going to be looking at when you open them. Um, and uh, the, the artwork is definitely um, very, very well done. And we'll look at that in one second. So I'm going to put these off to the side. And I just want to show you this real quick because this is an un un unopened version of the silver certificate. So just really briefly, um, the box, you can kind of see the artwork. Now this was individually sealed um, so you can kind of see that and individually numbered let me kind of get it so it's not shining so and 
that's the silver certificate deck. And again, these are now out of circulation. You can't get these anymore um, unless he does a re-release. So these are very rare. That's why I'm not gonna open this one because it's the only one I have. I do have another one of these, which I'm gonna show you briefly, but enough with these. Let's get into the actual cards because that is why we're here. So let's start with the box. Um, and we're gonna go Again, we're going to go kind of slow, so again, bear with me um, as I flip through my notes here. Uh, all right. So we're going to start kind of and look at the artwork and everything to do with the box. So let's get a, a real close-up view of the box. As you can see, the artwork is in direct correlation with what you'd see on an American or U.S. Federal Reserve note. And obviously the 52, the meaning by by that's obviously pretty self-explanatory. There's 52 decks in, there are 52 cards in the deck. So that's that. So let's start at the top. As you can see, the uh, Latin verbiage there, um, Novus Ordo uh, Sectorum, which is a Latin phrase that you find on the great seal on the dollar bill. Um, and what that means is a new order uh, of the ages. And it's on the bottom part of the... Um, unfinished pyramid and with the uh, eye of providence over it um, and there's also another saying on the seal that's not referenced on the deck at all um, that stands for the providence favors our um, undertakings so it's pretty much you know the the people that designed the the, the money in the great seal um, had faith that they were doing the right thing and that god would be watching over them that's kind of the symbolism there now, as you can see, the eagle on the top with the 13 stars underneath it, obviously the 13 uh, number is very prevalent in, in the money. Um, it's found everywhere. Um, you can look almost. Um, in, a, in a weird note here, um, the eagle's actually looking, would it be to the right, um, but on the seal on the dollar bill, it's actually looking to the left. So it's looking the opposite direction you'd find on the dollar bill, which I'm not sure if there was any symbolism in that or not. Um, we'd have, maybe have to ask and, and maybe find out, or if someone knows, um, you can leave it in the comments below and we can look into it. Um, obviously 13, um, these were the 13 original colonies. Um, also on the seal, the eagle can be found holding olive branches and arrows. Um, on each side and there's also 13 each of those as well um, for that so that's basically the front of the box and on the side you can see the federal 52 the federal 52 on the other side um, this came with just a standard gold seal um, nothing special it wasn't any of this a special edition or anything like that so it's just a, a, a plain seal on the bottom you can kind of see the legalese um, Jackson Robinson designer, King's Wild Project, and made in the USA, and his Theologians 411, which is the Bible passage you can find prevalent on the King's Wild Project website. And you also see the stamp there, which is um, a takeoff of the U.S. Treasury stamp, except on, on the Treasury stamp, you'll find on the top, um, there's the uh, Scales of Justice, and then the ribbon with the 13 stars. And then on the bottom, there's a key, which represents trust. So you're trusting in the banking system um, and all that stuff. So this is his take on that with just the K and the W for King's Wild Project. And again, um, you'll see that stamp in the deck in the green color, which would represent the Federal Reserve note. Just a heads up when we look in that. And the back is the same as the front. So, so let's get into the cards and we'll do a deep dive into what we're looking at. set that off to the side so again so the back design is the same as what we just saw with some color coordinated into it you can see the green very beautifully done I mean the, the, the drawing and the sketch work is just just amazingly amazing 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 and you can see in the middle um, which I guess you could call it a one-way back design if you see the the eye of providence in the middle there if you turn it one way, 
and turn it the other. So you could use this. I mean, this isn't a deck you're gonna do any any magic with or performing with. It's just it's a collector's deck. It's an art. It's an art piece of art. Really is what it is, because it's just it's just that good. So you can see that. Let's zoom in on that. You can see the color work there. Kind of a light green and gray, which you know represents. It looks like, you know, art you'd see on on a dollar bill or money or, or anything like that. So very well done there. And um, we'll get back to this in a second. So let's look. So one of the cards you get is a double back card and a bonus card. Now the jokers aren't necessarily jokers that you'd see um, in a normal deck. But again, this isn't a normal deck, so jokers wouldn't be something that you'd actually need. Um, so the two jokers are actually two pieces of a, a painting. As you can see right there, they go together. And I don't know if any of you recognize that artwork or not, but I will happily explain it to you. So, and you can see the red seal and the, and the dark seal on the other side. It's kind of what I was referencing earlier with the different colors and what they mean. So... This painting is um, George Washington crossing the Delaware. It is a, a famous painting. Um, and it was, um, the artist was Emmanuel Lutz or Lutze. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, but it was painted in 1851. And there were actually three versions of the painting done. Um, one was actually the original painting was in, um, in Germany, and I do believe it burned during um, some bombing raids in World War II. And the other two versions, there's one hanging in the Museum of Art in New York, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The other one, which was hanging in the West Wing of the White House um, several years ago, got moved to the Minnesota Marine Art Museum in Winona, Minnesota. So that's where you can find the other version of the painting. Now what this, what this painting is kind of about is um, it depicts uh, a surprise attack on the British forces on December 25th and 26th in 1776. So they crossed the Delaware and that began the, began the Battle of Trenton, um, which the Continental Army won. So it was kind of, that depicts kind of the beginning of the turn of the war. So it was, it's a very, very famous painting um, in American history. So I think it was very well done that he put this in the deck. Um, I mean, it doesn't really represent too much with money or anything like that, but just the symbolism behind it is, is very, very cool. And I'm glad he did this instead of just putting some standard jokers in it because again, this deck is not something you're going to need jokers for because it's a it's an art deck, it's a collector's deck, um, and so you're not going to be running out on the street to perform magic tricks for people. So um, I'm glad he put the kind of the time and effort into you know putting some more artwork into the deck. So let's look at now kind of the cards. Um, actually, let's turn them the other way so you guys can see them better. Um, so we'll start with the Ace of Spades, and again, it's the same kind of back design with the very large pipped ace in the middle. Um, there's no writing on it, just the artwork, and you can see it's kind of an elongated serif font. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the font is specifically, but again, he's he's he, uh, he uses different fonts in his decks. Um, some of the tally hoes he started with, he used the... Uh, Aerial Black Bold. Um, some of the newer versions of his tally hose, he's gone back to this kind of elongated serif font, which is a little more elegant. Um, but either one is really nice, and I think this really works with this particular deck, with the with the sketching and the artwork. Um, I think it's perfect um, the way it is. So. Um, I'm glad he didn't use the kind of the bold unserif font because that looks it looks better on a standard deck of cards, but this one um, it happens to work. So uh, your regular pip cards. Now these are these are spaced out pretty far, so there's a lot of negative space on these, um, which is fine. Um, and just to kind of shuffle through some of them. But what's what we really want to do is get into the uh, court cards, which again are kind of the uh, masterpieces of these decks. Um, and now I'm going to show you, 
um, this card here, which I kind of flashed in the beginning. But this is going to be a breakdown of who's on every card. So a lot of these people you're going to know. Some of them you don't know. I had to look up a few of the people. Um, but we'll go kind of through them one by one and talk about them. You can see the Jokers there, which it kind of tells you a little bit about that painting that I referenced a few minutes ago. So you can see that there. So, and a, and a lot of these people, again, are kind of um, self-explanatory for anyone that knows anything about American history, at least. Uh, I know some of you may not, but... Um, so if we start with the spades, um, the jack, and again, this is one I had to look up, and it's kind of a, a neat little story, um, as you can see there. And you can see, again, so you can see the green seals on the side there with the King's Wild Project seals that uh, kind of reflect the Federal Reserve note seals. Um, and this is William, I think it's Fessenenden. I'm not exactly sure, I'm gonna butcher that name. Um, his names are not my calling card. Um, Fessenden, so what? who he was, and I, again, I had to look it up because I wasn't exactly sure. Um, but he was the Treasury Secretary under Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. And his kind of, I guess, claim to fame um, would be that he's one of only three people that were depicted on fractional currency during the Civil War. And what this was is um, very small increments of money that they printed um, to kind of help out during the war effort. So there was... Uh, there were, there were three cent bills, five cent bills, 10 cent bills, 25 cent and 50 cent denominations printed. So, and he was one of the ones depicted on that. So that's why kind of he got placed into this deck because it is a kind of a rare piece of currency um, for that. And again, when I saw the name, I wasn't exactly sure. Um, and we got Lady Liberty here on the queen. And obviously you all know Ben Franklin or I think hopefully most of you would know who Ben Franklin is. He's on the $100 bill. Um, you saw his eye in the last deck study I did. Um, and again, he was a, was a big part of the uh, founding of, of the country. And, and so that's why he is there. And again, one of the, he's one of the only presidents not depicted on money. If you know that, I think there's only two, and we'll get to the other one later. And here's your ace which the aces are super sweet. So let's just skip ahead and I'll show you all of them here and we'll get back to the rest of the court cards later. And there's that. And I already showed you the ace of spades, but these these look, I mean, these are probably the best part of the deck for me. Um, let me flip these again so you guys can see them a little better. But just the color, the stamp look, the actual, I mean, if you turn it, I mean, it looks, it looks like money. I mean, the, the artwork is just, just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Um, you know, this, the time and effort that, that he put into these is just crazy. Uh, and it, it just makes me smile when I open the decks and see this stuff, the intricacies, you know, every little detail. Um, there's actually, what does it say? Oh, it says, so, um, I mean, the, the, the kind of the spider web look around all these. I mean, you see that you see that on dollar bills that are printed and twenty dollar bills and ten dollar bills. I mean, it's just the the small little details is what makes it so great. Um, so there's there's your um, there's your aces. I mean, I think they're spectacular. Might be one, some of my favorite ones until we get to the silver certificates, of course, because I think they're a little bit better. So. If we scroll back through our peeps, so we see our jack, and this is another one of the ones I had to look up. Um, so the jack of diamonds um, was Samuel Morse, and he was an American inventor. Um, and his kind of claim to fame was he assisted in the uh, single wire telegraph system, and he also co-invented Morse code, which is... Um, a distress signal that uh, is used. So he is your Jack of Diamonds. Um, queen of Diamonds is a portrait of the Queen. Simple. And here is your other non-president money person, who's Alexander Hamilton. But he was the first 
um, Treasury Secretary. He's found founding father of the U.S. Treasury. So he's very important when it comes to money and bills and all the stuff we've been talking about here. And here's another really cool one. Um, the King of Clubs. And... Um, this is Running Antelope, Native American, and he, he, he is on, on old certificate money. I mean, this, is, this image almost comes right off the bills that he was originally printed on. So it's a very, very cool that he included this one in there. You can get a good look at the detail there. And Queen again. The queen, this is an image of the flowers of the south. So here's your queen of clubs. And Jack is James Madison, father of the Constitution. Um, he's pretty much credited with writing the U.S. Constitution. Again, his claim to fame, and he was a president as well. So lots of history with that. And those are all... Oh, we got the hearts. I almost forgot. I didn't pull those out. So you have Andrew Jackson, who's on the $20 bill. And I think that's an image almost right off the bill. So again, I mean, it's, again, the artwork and detail. I can't even you know, keep talking about it and keep talking about it, but it's just ridiculous. And here's your Queen of Hearts, which is the Goddess Hypatia. I didn't even look, I didn't even look this one up. I ran out of time. I ran out of space on my paper. And I see I'm already at 26 minutes. So we got a little ways to go, almost done. But you can see that great image there. And the Jack is William Seward. And again, you can look, you can look, you can look all these people up if you want. I mean, I'm sure most of you probably won't because it's kind of boring, but it's kind of the stuff I like to do. And as you can, as you can tell, if you watched any of my deck studies in the past, you know, I kind of go on and on about this stuff, but beside the point. So let's kind of look at some of these other cards here and we'll get wrapping this up. It was my aim to make this my longest deck study, so I do have to go over 30 minutes just to let you know. Um, but here's the club. Again, it's, it's that real thin, kind of thinned club that I really like. Um, this is a version of the club that I prefer to see when I open decks um, instead of the kind of the more bulgy, bulgier ones that you'll find sometimes. Um, and I think we talked about that in one of the other King's Wild decks. I think it was a Tally Ho because um, it looked a lot of like the Artifice Clubs, which is almost like a, just a black blodge with a, with a few humps in it. Um, it's definitely this defined club that I really, really like. And again, you can see the elongated numbers. And again, on the court cards, you can kind of see how these elongated fonts I really, really like. So you can see those there. Um, so that is, I think, just about it. Um, so this, again, going back to kind of where we started, this was a deck that I've, I've, I've always wanted to have from when I saw it um, for the first time, and it, it wasn't available anymore, and I was really disappointed that I couldn't get it. So I'm super, super happy that King's Wild Project did a second version of this so we could get our hands on it. Um, and I finally got around to opening my silver certificates the other day, kind of getting ready for this video. And those cards are even better. Um, they're even better. Um, the artwork is just insane. It's insane. But I, you know, like I said, I, th I don't think I'm going to do a full deck study on, on that deck. Maybe we'll have some fun, like I said, on an Instagram Live or something like that um, to kind of look at those. Um, now this deck, he kind of explains, and if you if you go to the uh, the website to purchase this, there's a little description. I'm um, gonna kind of talks about the history and everything like that. But it, it said he, he's taken the best parts of out of all the series of decks and kind of put them into one. Not so sure I agree with that because um, I have seen the cards in the black Re or the gold certificates, um, and I've seen the artwork in the silver silver certificates, and I I like the silver certificates better. Um, the artwork's better. Um, there's more intricacies. Um, just the overall, the overall aesthetics is better. Um, but again, this this deck had to be mass produced, so um, I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it. But the artwork in the silver certificate is definitely better. Um, 
but again that takes away nothing from from this deck it, it's uh it's it's one of a kind um and i don't i just don't know how long they're going to be available for lots of the decks that king's wild project puts out or limited time only because there's only so many that they're going to make and he's not a super large company like bicycle or you know expert or your know, legends or any of those so they, he, he can't mass produce these things like crazy so once they're gone unfortunately they're gone um that's why i'm super happy i was able to get these years ago and now they're just sitting in my collection in a display case um and again i finally got around to opening that one the other day uh so if i were you and you're a collector i would run out and get grab a couple of them uh and I, i'm not i think i'm not sure the price i don't want to i don't want to quote it here on the video and have it be wrong but it's not outrageously pricey um, to get two. I always buy things in twos, or I try to, so I can keep one um, in the cello and open one and play with it and show you guys. So we're going to wrap it there um, again. So I have more coming. Um, this is just the, the the relaunch, the relaunch into my channel. Um, and, you know, as I like to say, I do like to hear myself talk. Um, I do pride myself in going way more in depth than anybody else in looking at these decks because it's what I love to do. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a former graphic designer myself. So, you know, and I love history and this stuff fascinates me to no end. That's why I don't mind giving, you know, it's going to be 30 some minutes of my time to talk about this deck because, you know, the artists put so much work into these decks. Um, they deserve more than a few minutes of just opening the box and showing them um, I like to go into detail, and there's, there's, I've said it before, and I'll say it again um, until my last breath. That there's a reason for everything. There's a reason for everything in these decks, and it's more, it's way more than just opening them and showing the cards. So, I'm sorry, and I'm sure I'm gonna, you know, catch heat in the comments for going on and on, but too bad. It's my channel. If you don't like it, you know, you know where the door is, as they say. Um, but I'm gonna keep doing what I do. Um, I got. I got lots of stuff on the way. Like I said, I got the Black Reserve notes coming. Um, I've got Cherry Casinos coming. I've got more Lay Me Ace cards coming. Um, I've got stuff that I've had laid around my collection for all year. And I got a bunch of Madison decks I want to show you guys. Um, the Remedies are coming, um, hopefully in the mail this week. So I'll get those two at some point. Um, and much, 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 much more. So it's good to be back. And I look forward to... Uh, much much more and many good things this year and i'm going to link some some things in the bottom so i'll have links to king's wild project where you can get this deck um right there so you can go right there if you, if you want to purchase it um and also I'm, I'm back on instagram so you guys can check me out over there i'll have images and previews and teases of stuff that's coming up so hit me on over there uh, i'm on you know a couple times a day just posting random stuff so like I said, I'm glad to be back, and we will see you out there. Thanks.